Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Andreas, Andreas Penga. I'm head of EIM. And with me is Dennis, Dennis Kniep. Hi. Hi, uh, my name is Dennis Kniep and I'm the domain architect for Identity Nexus Management in our company. I have a developer background and I love to design and implement systems related to security, especially when it comes to uh, authentication. That's it about me. Thanks. And the both of us, we are working for a company, um, a science and technology company that is dedicated to human progress. We have about 80,000 users and yeah, we implemented FIDO. <laughs> Guess what? So why did we do this? Um, and how did we do this? Um, we took a different approach than probably other companies. And um, this has several reasons. Well, the first one is obvious. We have cyber attacks and uh, the obvious answer to this for authentication is, is FIDO. There are a lot of other speeches that you can uh, watch um, also here in the AuthenticateCon um, that explain it very well. I will not deep dive into this topic. I would like to deep dive into our principles. And um, this is a little different, I guess. So we want to own our identities. We want to own credentials and we want to own the authentication part. That means we cannot use some kind of SaaS solution that is out there uh, that takes over all the tasks. We want to be able to analyze and to optimize everything that you know happens with credentials and authentication. And there's a third topic. Uh, it's a little specific for our company. We have two domains with which we can authenticate. Um, this had to be taken into consideration too. Good, let's start the presentation. Um, when we have finished this presentation, you will have learned um, how we have implemented our FIDO infrastructure. So it's a completely self-hosted infrastructure. Um, we have in parallel, at least at the beginning, um, our FIDO authentication self-hosted and the conventional MFA as SAS. And thirdly, you will learn how we can enforce the authentication via FIDO um, based on the user con context actually. Then we will look into our credential service, um, which is used for onboarding, recovery, and in general management of accounts. Um, this is something that is enforced. Um, it will also explain how we register both domains that I was talking earlier about uh, in one wizard and how we can do this all context-based um, to, to show the user only the authentications that we consider secure and valid for the the setup that he is in. And lastly, we would like to look into the identity verification. This is something that is important to us because of the onboarding and recovery process that I was talking about earlier. It has to be secure um, in a remote way. Um, we have to have several or multiple verification options available due to the setup that we have in the company. And of course, they have to be instant. Okay, so I guess these are the topics that we will talk about and uh, that you will learn. So let's get it started. Dennis, what do you think? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Um, the core of our FIDO infrastructure is an open source FIDO server, which is hosted by ourselves. It is certified by the FIDO Alliance, which ensures interoperability with other FIDO products. We are running multiple servers in a cluster which are hosted across different data centers. And the responsibility of the FIDO server is to securely store the registered FIDO credentials in our self-hosted environment so that we have really full control over these credentials. Furthermore, it should provide flexibility to us so that several relying parties can use the FIDO credentials for authentication. And we remain open for future use cases, for instance, transaction confirmation. We are working very closely with the vendor to integrate new requirements and to continuously improve the open source product. We extended the FIDO server with an additional service to fulfill specific and individual business needs we named this application FIDO Wrapper 
For example, it is used to um, store metadata in addition to an already registered FIDO authenticator. For example, metadata that is retrieved by the FIDO Alliance metadata service, or for instance, the information which authentication mechanism was used during FIDO authenticator registration. The FIDO wrapper is also responsible to publish events for um, executed operations to notify other business relevant systems. And an, another important feature is to support registration of FIDO authenticators for multiple domains, as Andreas already mentioned. Especially for that business case, the FIDO, FIDO wrapper is encapsulating the authenticator, which is registered for all of our domains into a single um, logical FIDO authenticator. So that management API calls to the FIDO wrapper, like um, registering, renaming, deleting, and so on, are based on that logical FIDO authenticator. And behind the scenes, it manages all the detailed operations while providing consistency. Um, coming to the point uh, authentication at the very top of that diagram. One of our main goals is to enable FIDO authentication during web-based single sign-on. Most applications use our web-based single sign-on server for authentication right now. And all these applications will benefit immediately without changing anything on the application side because we integrated the ability of FIDO authentication into our web-based single sign-on services. Our company has multiple identity providers which are responsible for web-based single sign-on. There is no out-of-the-box integration with our FIDO server. Therefore, we developed plugins for each identity provider. These plugins are invoking the FIDO authentication process and then forwarding the authentication requests to our FIDO server in the back channel. We have a large user base and not all users are enrolling and, and getting confident with FIDO overnight. Therefore, we considered a migration path for each user individually. A user can opt in for FIDO voluntarily until they are tackled in a specific FIDO rollout wave. And we found it reasonable to provide a soft migration path for the user. The user can still authenticate with legacy MFA, but FIDO will be always advertised as preferred authentication option. So the user can get used to the new authentication mechanism slowly and step by step. But on the other side, having legacy MFA still available means that the users are vulnerable to downgrade attacks, resulting in the problem that the user can still be fished. To mitigate this, we enforce FIDO for individual users at a specific point in time. That means that no other authentication mechanism except FIDO is possible for web-based single sign-on. And only this unleashes full phishing resistant security. Next, um, I would like to talk about the credential self-service. For registering FIDO authenticators, we utilize a very generic application that we self-developed, the credential self-service. This application provides the ability for the user to execute specific actions, and before he's able to execute that action, the user must authenticate with a well-defined authentication journey. Um, meaning one or many factors he must solve chained behind each other. If the user has already an account in our company, 
he's able to authenticate with it and can register his first authenticator. But once the FIDO authenticator is registered, we want to keep and enforce that very high level of security for further registrations and don't want to fall back to a weaker authentication method. Therefore, further FIDO authenticators can only be registered by using the FIDO authentication method. But that enforcement brings its own challenges. How can a platform FIDO authenticator be used as authentication method to register an other platform FIDO authenticator? To be more precise and as an example, how can iPhone Touch ID be used as authentication method to register a Windows Hello Pin? That is for sure challenging and we are developing a flow that exactly this is possible in a secure and still phishing resistant way. As already mentioned, there is a specific business need uh, and requirement that we offer our web applications in the US under a different domain than in the rest of the world. Due to FIDO authenticators are bound to the domain, we need to register the FIDO authenticator for all of our domains. That is done through the FIDO registration wizard. The user is step-by-step -step redirected to all of our domains where he's prompted to execute the FIDO registration. This was about FIDO authenticator registration for an already existing account. But what about a user who is not capable of logging in by his normal authentication mechanism because, well, he forgot the pin of his FIDO authenticator and other FIDO authenticators are unreachable or even worse, he completely lost all FIDO authenticators. Then he cannot log in anymore. This case is actually very similar to the onboarding scenario. How can a user who is new to the company register a new FIDO authenticator? He does not have an account that he can use for authentication. For account recovery and onboarding scenarios like these, our goal is to provide an equally secure mechanism for registering a FIDO authenticator. We want to make sure that all FIDO authenticators are registered with the most secure verification mechanism that is available for the user. We can configure the credential self-service application with special authentication journeys for the FIDO registration. Then for account recovery and onboarding, the user is able to verify his identity and execute the action to register a FIDO authenticator. The topic identity verification is now going more into detail about that. Thanks. Good. Let's dive into it. Identity verification. Okay, so you have heard about the phishing resistant authentication part and the self-service that Dennis explained. Um, let's take this as is, right? It is already there, FIDO is a commodity. Let's assume this. What is the next focus? It's identity verification, obviously. It is about claiming uh, ownership of an account as Dennis already talked about it, right? We need to talk about onboarding and recovery. What happens if a user forgets the security key? What happens if a laptop is broken or exchanged? If you forget your phone at home or your security key? if you simply have nothing left, or if you're a new joiner. For all these cases, we need the identity verifications. So what kind of requirements do we have? So first of all, it has to be enforced. This is what we have the self-service portal for, and Dennis already talked about it. Before you register a new device, you have to verify your identity. The second thing is we need multiple verification options. So. Um, we need to be able to adapt to a very broad base of users. 
we have um, a variety of users, like someone in a lab or, I don't know, in, in a production site, and of course also uh, office drones like me, right? So it's a completely different setup. And this is also spread across the globe. And um, yeah, we need to make sure we have multiple of these um, methods available. The third thing is it has to be instant. If you start a verification process, it is okay if it's a little tedious, right? If you uh, it, if it takes the time to get through it, but the result has to be instant. There's it cannot be an option to say, okay, now wait for a while and then you can continue. The result has to be there instantly. Okay, so the requirements, as you can see already listed, um, is it has to be enforced. Uh, it has to be multiple um, verification options and instant. Let's let's look into the options that we came up with. Um, before we do that, we probably need to talk about the information that we can that we can actually work with, right? So, if you have a new joiner or also an existing employee, you usually have a name. Uh, most of the time, you have a phone number, and you have a manager. These are the three things that always are available. Everything else is a little wake, right? So this is why we use these three topics and uh, made them verification options. The first one is the colleague or the manager. You join the company, um, then you have a manager. We call it the colleague factor or manager factor. It means that you start the onboarding flow and this onboarding flow contacts the manager and he has to verify your identity during a phone call. So he has to actually talk to you and afterwards hand over a security code. This works for onboarding as well as recovery. It has some downsides. So if you are in a team that is spread around the globe, you have time zone issues. If you have a team that um, is very small, then probably your colleague is on holiday or your manager. And thirdly, maybe you are working in production and all your colleagues are not sitting in front of a computer, but they're actually working, right? <laughs> so in that case, you cannot use this flow. Um, we have to make use of a different option, the phone number, for instance. You already know this from authentication perspective. You get an SMS or a phone call and you type in the code or you press dash or whatever, and you're authenticated. But we learned this is probably not phishing resistant. So we had to focus on something that is actually within the device, the SIM card. And um, our mobile phone verification flow is based on the SIM card. We check if the number that we currently have is actually in the device that tries to register a new authenticator. So if you're on your mobile phone and your phone number is available, then we can make sure that we have a phishing resistant flow to, to understand that the device actually belongs to, to you. This one is also very good, um, but it has its downsides too. We have to make sure that the MNO actually supports this flow. And obviously that is not possible throughout the world or at least not yet available. The third thing is the ID document verification that you are probably very aware of. Um, the user has to have a passport available. We have the, the name, right, that we can work with. And uh, then we trust uh, a SaaS product to verify the identity with a video of the person and of the passport and do all the stuff to make sure that this person is actually the one that we want to onboard. So I talked about three different options that we that we currently have: the colleague factor, the mobile phone num, uh, the mobile phone number verification, and the ID document verification. And um, that is what is what we are using for our entire workforce. By the way, the picture that you're seeing here is um, the mobile phone verification, but we will not go into detail here. This is something that we will keep for the next session in October. Um, and I guess this is also how I would like to close this call. I would like to say thank you to all of you. Thanks for joining in. I hope you understand and learned how we are actually doing this. And I'm looking forward to meet you in Washington in October. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.